I was 12 years old, and my mom was talking to a couple of friends of hers about where they were when they learned that Kennedy got shot. One of the friends admitted that she couldn't actually recall where she was, and that freaked my mom right the fuck out. How could somebody not remember that moment? Now, psychologists will tell you that these so-called flashpoint memories are just as reliable as most of our other memories, but I didn't know that at the time, and neither did my mom. It was simply unthinkable in her mind that somebody could have forgotten that moment, and that was simply unthinkable to me. I couldn't comprehend of an event so potent that you'd be surprised if somebody failed to recall it precisely a quarter of a century later, and I continued to not comprehend that for another 13 years. It's damn hard to say that there was a silver lining to 9-11. I'll have enough respect not to try to rank it on a scale of tragedy, but it was the most horrible example of humanity that I've ever had to witness. The emotional reaction that so many of us shared that day can't really be explained rationally. That colossal mix of anger, fear, and impotence isn't something I'd ever like to revisit. But if there was a phoenix that rose from the ashes that day, it was the New Atheist Movement. The Four Horsemen all cite the 9-11 attacks as the impetus to their vocal opposition to religion. See, throughout the 90s, we'd all been force-fed this immutable dictum of cultural tolerance, so faith was off-limits. Sure, there were plenty of atheists out there, and there were plenty of people bitching about the evils of religion, but after 9-11, all of a sudden, those people were on TV. They were writing bestsellers. Suddenly, they were being listened to. See, they'd been right all along, but it took a few airplanes crashing into a few buildings on live television for a lot of people to realize that. Of course, references to 9-11 have fallen out of favor in the atheist movement. It's become fashionable to rise above that type of rhetoric. I've seen a number of prominent atheists vehemently disavowing the popular meme that reminds us that science flies you to the moon while religion flies you into buildings. Or the one that shows the Twin Towers standing stalwart above the words, Imagine no religion. Now, the platitude a la mode would tell us that the number of religious people who have flown airplanes into buildings is sufficiently eclipsed by the number of religious people who haven't flown airplanes into buildings. It would be too simplistic to say religion did it, wouldn't it? There were far more things contributing to the rationale of the suicide bombers on 9-11 than just the six dozen hotties they were about to deflower, so you can't blame religion, can you? And there's a lot there that I'll agree with. I'll agree that the overwhelming majority of believers are not suicide bombers, and I'll agree that it's way more complex than religion did it. I'll even agree that there were plenty of other contributing factors, and even granting all that, I will still blame the shit out of religion. Here's the thing. Convincing somebody to blow themselves up is trickier than you think. Now, without divulging any of the details of why I know that, consider the most gullible person you know and ask yourself if you think you could convince them that blowing themselves up would earn them a trip to a virgin-laden paradise. Tough, huh? Now imagine you had to do that without using religion. No one person could do that. It would take indoctrination from birth. It would take total control of what the victim learned, what they read, what they watched. It would take institutions to make somebody believe something so patently counterintuitive. And it just so happens that we have institutions that were designed for exactly that purpose. Modern-day religious apologists are fond of telling us that religion of today is nothing like the barbaric faith at its roots, and that's true to a certain extent in certain parts of the world at certain times, but that doesn't change the fact that the vehicle they're driving was originally designed to make people do what they were told to do, even, nay, especially when it went against their own best interest. If you take out the poverty or the nationalism or the charismatic recruiter, you can probably still round up 19 guys willing to kill themselves in the name of God. But if you take out the God, your task becomes damn near impossible. So call it hyperbolic if you want. But I'll say that if there was any one lesson we could extract from the tragedy of 9-11, it's that religious zealotry isn't something we can afford to tolerate.